I'm Harry and welcome to my channel and today we're going to look at the Iron Man 2 compensated reactive power attenuator from Tiger King amplifiers. So before we get started if you like this demo video at any point please leave a like, comment and subscribe and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. There's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I use in this video and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further so I'd really appreciate it. go and check them out. So as the title suggests I really think this is an essential piece of gear if you are on a guitar amplifier because many tube amps really need to be cooking a little bit to sound their best and then you come into the problem of them being too loud which is increasingly even becoming a problem at gigs but more importantly it's definitely a problem for at home if you have neighbours, if you're in a flat or you just want to keep the volume down and save your ears a little bit. So I've been using the Ironman 2 in all my videos recently. Whenever I'm using one of my amps I run it through there usually just to shave off a couple of decibels because I usually use clean amps but then for example when I'm using my Cornell Plexi which I want to get some great dry from if I wasn't attenuating it, I'd be blowing my eardrums out, damaging my hearing and really annoying my neighbours. And the Ironman 2 allows me just to knock off these dBs and get perfect tone and feel as if I was playing it at full volume. So like I said at the beginning, it's a reactive load, so it actually keeps your tone and feel intact. As the impedance relationship between a speaker and output transformer is constantly changing and fluctuating, depending on what you're playing. And this is a really important feature to have if you want to keep the sounds and feel of your amp intact. So on the front panel, we have the big trick head knob that allows us to switch between all the different attenuate levels. So we have a high and low range for different attenuation levels as well as the solo mode. Now the Ironman 2 does come with a foot switch so you could be using this live and you could hit the foot switch for a solo boost because it'll go to a different decibel level as in the high or low mode or you can use it just to give you some even more flexibility of different decibel cuts. This is by far the most flexible attenuate I've seen because you have the low range, the high range and the solo range giving you tons of different attenuation levels. We also have a three-way presence switch so if you want to knock off a bit of the top end when you're attenuating, you can do that. We can either have it flat at 0 dB, can have minus 3 dB or minus 6 dB. You can actually set up the attenuator as well. So it's actually running in a bypass mode. So there's no attenuation going on at all. And to do this, you'd go into the 0 dB position on the solo mode. So if you've got a really clean amp and you want to have the attenuator in line, but you don't want to knock off any volume, you can do that or if you want to then crank that clean amp, then you can bring in the attenuation. We have a maximum possible attenuation of minus 38 dB in the low range, which is insanely quiet, so much so that your guitar strings would actually be louder than the amp. But the cool thing about this is when you're in this mode, you can safely unplug the amp and the Iron Man 2 will act as the dummy lies, and then you could record straight from the Iron Man into your interface silently. So you could either use the line out and use your own impulse responses in your door, or you could use the built-in DI with analog speaker simulation too. The attenuator is capable of handling to 100 watt amps and I've been on the search for a good attenuate for a long time and a lot of them just changed the time too much for me and this is by far my favorite option I've ever played. So on the DI output on the back we have a level which can either be minus 10 dB or minus 30 dB for matching with your interface. We have an axis control for cone or edge tone so it's like moving the mic placement on the speaker and then we have a ground lift switch. Line out can either be used going straight into your interface and then lighting up your own impulse responses or you can actually use it to drive the front end of another amp. We have the foot switch in for the solo foot switch and a really cool thing is the speaker out actually has two outputs so you can connect two cabs but more importantly the speaker out and the amp in both have their own arm selectors so you don't have to match the head to the cab and then run it through the attenuator. You can match any arm amp with any arm cab as well. Of course you can use the DI out with analog speaker simulator for 
recording or sending to the front of house at a gig. This is a really cool attenuator as we'll see in the video. So we're going to test it out with an amp that would be impossible to drive at home in my home studio without the use of a good attenuator, which is my Cornell 4550 Plexi, which is a 50 watt Plexi, non-master volume, so you really need to crank it up to get some overdrive going. So the Cornell 4550 Plexi is running into the Ironman 2 attenuator and then into a Celestian G12 M65 Creambat speaker that's been recorded by a Lewitt MTP 440 dynamic microphone, which is like an SM57 with a tiny bit more bass. At first, we're going to test it out, and I'm just going to leave all the mic levels the same. So we're just going to see how quiet the attenuation goes and have a look at the present switch. So I've set up a looper to do this, and then we're actually going to do the same, but then I'm going to volume match all the clips in Logic in post. So you can actually hear the tone differences, if there is any, from the different levels, but you'll hear them all at the same level. So you're not getting any weird perceived differences just from the volume going down. And then finally, we're going to look at the DI out with the analog speaker simulator as well. So let's start with just looking at the attenuations and the presence controls. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw the different attenuations, we have loads of range. We went from completely bypass and then into the high mode and just looked at them. But then of course we have the low mode and the solo mode if you really want to tweak it for different amps. So now I'm going to do the same. Again, it's with the looper running in and I'm going to use exactly the same step downs, but I'm actually going to volume match in pause so you can see how, exactly how much difference the attenuator is actually making to the sound without any perceived differences just from the volume going down. <laughs>
Okay, so now finally we're going to look at the DI out with the analog speaker sim, which you could use to record into your interface like I'm doing now, or you could use it to go to the front of house at a live gig. In this mod, I'm using the Ironman 2 as a dummy light, so I completely disengage the speaker so it's like silent recording straight into my interface. <laughs> So there we have it, that was a look at the Iron Man 2 compensated reactive power attenuator from Time King Amps. Like I said at the beginning, I've really been on the search for a good attenuator just for when I'm at home, especially when I'm using the Plexi so I can gun it and get some nice cranked overdrive tone and bring the volume down. Or if I just want to get some of my clean amps in that sweet spot and bring the volume down. Or if I'm having a long recording session, I don't want to play too loud for too long and save my ears, I can knock a few dBs off. Many attenuators that I've used in the past, including the Universal Arcs, were great, but they always change the time too much. And the Time King Iron Man 2 attenuator is definitely the best option for me. It really keeps the feel and time intact and really sounds great in all settings. Having the low, high and solo range mice to give us so many different attenuation levels is really killer. So if you're using a 100 watt amp, a 50 watt amp, or even something smaller, you can really dial this in perfect. Of course, you can have the solo mode on a fit switch so if you're playing live and you want a little boost or if you're playing at home and you want a little boost you can just kick that on and off then of course the three-way present switch go from 0 db to minus 3 db to minus 6 db to tailor the top end is really killer some of the highlights for me though on the back having those two speaker outs and having the different arm selectors for the speaker and the amp is really killer so you don't have to worry about matching an amp to a cab you can just use whatever amp with whatever cab you like and of course another really cool feature is being able to use the i man 2 as a reactive load dummy box so you can actually record silently via the di out with analog speaker simulation directly into your interface or if you're playing live and you want to give front of house a really good sound then you can do that as well i think if you have a guitar ramp and you want to get the best out of it and get in that sweet spot and you're really conscious about volume or even just saving your ears and then of course using with non-master volume amps this is a really good bet and i can't recommend it enough but let me know down in the comments what you thought of the iron man 2 at any way and if you'd go and pick one up for yourself it's quite amazing how you can go from fully open to really really quiet to where it's barely audible you can get bedroom volume by using really loud 100 watt amps and still keep the time and feel intact again there's going to be affiliate links down in the description to the iron man 2 attenuator and all the gear i used in this video and to record my videos these do help support the channel out further so i really appreciate it if you go and check them out if you did like this demo video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. Other than that, go onto my channel, check out some of my playlists, have plenty more lessons, covers, gear demos, how to sound like videos, and anything guitar related. As always, I've been Harry, and thanks for watching.